So what are you guys? We're part of the Sparkwood family! Hi guys, for this first lesson I want to get into quantum numbers. I want to keep it pretty mellow and just give us what we need for the exam, okay? But I also want to use this as an opportunity to set up some framing for stuff we'll do later, okay? So the first thing is, um, you remember the old high school lie or junior high lie? Which is basically you've got the nucleus with neutrons and positive protons hanging out. So neutral neutrons, positive protons, some sort of positive nucleus. And then you have the electrons kind of running in orbits like this. Very roughly. And the electrons are, of course, negative. OK. So the thinking was, roughly, the farther out you are, the more energy you have. And why is that the case? Because how come this piece of chalk has more energy here? At least it feels like it does, right? If I let him go, it's going to go and smack the ground than if he's just sitting on the ground. It's because he could do more for you. So if we look at it this way, if you, negative likes positive. So if you were to let this guy go, this sucker would literally crash into that positive. And if you were to let this guy go, he would crash into that positive, right? Theoretically, if we kept this super simple and just use classical thinking, this would work, right? This guy goes this far, this guy goes that far, this guy does something for you, this guy does more. If he can do more, he has more energy. So the farther out you are, generally, the more energy you have. Okay? So one of the things that encapsulates that idea is the principal quantum number. So that's number one. So the principal quantum number. Okay? Uh, and the principal quantum number n, one I known by n, right? That can range from the first to the second to the third to the fourth to the fifth out to infinity. This is what I like to think of as the old school version of energy level. The higher the energy level, the more energy you have, because roughly, the farther out you are. Okay? And if you're farther out, you come crashing into the nucleus, you can get more done. Okay, but now, let's leave behind the high school lie and go to, I guess, some better lie. So now you've got this nucleus again, but this time we know that uh, the electron doesn't go in a perfect orbit. In fact, it doesn't even come close. It's doing something kind of like this. In fact, the world of quantum is so confusing now that basically nobody, living or dead, really understands it. Okay? I mean, they can do the math, they can do all that, but no one really can wrap their head around intuitively what all this stuff means. So we're just going to keep it simple. Okay? We're going to do an approximation here. We're going to think of it like this. Uh, we don't really know what the electron is doing. It's like all over the place. Maybe it's not even moving. Maybe it's smeared out. Is it in one place? Is it in many places? Super confusing. But what we do know is you're more likely to find the electron here than you are, say, way over here. Does everybody agree? So we have some idea. It's not a perfect orbit. It's like this kind of wannabe orbit type thing. So I call it an orbital. Okay. Now, if you're really into chemistry, you know that this whole thing, the principal quantum or all that, will basically give us an orbital. Okay. But I want to keep it simple. I want to think of this as the distance from the nucleus. And what I want to think of number two as is roughly the, re the shape of the region of space where you're likely to be found. Okay. So I'm going to think of that as the type of orbital. So the simplest is, of course, you can be found symmetrically around the nucleus, and that is the s orbital, right? Uh, another one up is going to be the p, where you're kind of in this dumbbell shape around the nucleus. Okay? The only shapes you should really know hardcore are just the s and the p. Okay? Uh, I'll keep this going, though, just for completeness and show you some examples. The d, you can visualize them to have a rough approximation. It's having more dumbbells. So d would kind of look like this. Please don't get this confused. This is not two p's together. A p orbital, the electron's either here or here, somewhere like that, but not likely to be found here or there. But in a d orbital like this, you can be found here, 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 or here. Any of the four lobes is pretty much totally fine. Okay, so now let's look at this. So for an f orbital, sorry, it's supposed to be an f, uh, you can think of that roughly as just more dumbbells. So now three dumbbells, like this. Okay? Now, it is true when you look in your textbooks and all that, there are other shapes that go along with these guys. Some of them look more like you know, dumbbells with little hoops on them, et cetera, et cetera. I wouldn't worry about that for our exam. It's enough to know that the principal quantum number gives you roughly total energy and distance from the nucleus. The next guy, which we've done so far here, gives you a description of the type of orbital you're dealing with. Okay? Meaning roughly like what shape are you taking around the nucleus, whether that's S, P, D, or F. Okay? And so that guy is actually going to be called the angular momentum quantum number. Okay? Another name for this is the azimuthal quantum number. For reasons that we don't need to get into here, but if it really stresses out, you can message us and we'll talk about it. Um, this angular momentum quantum number is tied in some sense to um, momentum, the way you think of it, like angular momentum. I always want to be careful when I say things like that because the quantum world doesn't really like the classical world that much, but um, it's all good. What's your name? Puri. Puri. Oh, Puri, you missed the first. So, Hang out over there. Mackenzie? 
Baby, can you send McKinsey out? Yes, right here. McKinsey? Can you take him too? He's yes. spy form. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so azimuthal quantum number. Do you remember the other name for this? Probably the one you might have seen. It's not the M guy yet, but the another term. We don't even have to have the exact name. Do you remember there's another term roughly connected to this guy? Not spin, but momentum. So I'm not going to give you the full name, but just think in your head, you might see the term momentum connected with that. Okay. Okay, it's connected to angular momentum. Now, decision time. Are we happy roughly with this pseudo lie about this guy basically being a wannabe orbit? Or do you want to talk more about how it relates to momentum? You don't really need that, but if it makes you feel better, we could talk about it. Or are we kind of happy here? It's up to you. Just No, I haven't even talked about that yet. Okay. And we're just follow the path and we're good. So are we okay with this? So I get a feel for this cycle. Are we comfortable leaving orbitals like that? Or do you want to talk about how it actually in a weird way represents angular momentum? Yes, no, or okay? Uh, I don't think I'm, well, my in a hydrogen atom, you have electrons and you have the electrons spinning around doing their thing and it's not totally real, but angular momentum is like this momentum you have because you're spinning around. And this kind of represents, in a way, how much of the energy you have is invested in that spinning. Okay. The only reason I'd even mention that is we're going to get numbers for this. First, everybody's got to know the letter L. And you think in your head just orbital, roughly where he's likely to be, what he's likely to be doing. Okay. Uh, do you remember how these L values run from? Right. Zero up to N minus one. Okay. Is everybody okay with this? Okay. But remember, again, the only thinking here is this is just an, a number to represent roughly where you are and what you're doing in space. Okay? Orbital. So I want to think like that. Uh, if you want to use the momentum thing, I don't necessarily advise it, but the momentum thinking is like this. You can think of this as your total energy. So say your total energy is three. Some of that energy you saw was based on how far you are from the nucleus. Do you guys agree? So can all of your energy be invested in spinning? It can't because some of it is invested on how far you are from the nucleus. Do you guys agree with that? That's why this number really cannot be n. Because if it were n, it would be like all of your energy is invested in spinning. That doesn't make sense. Some of it's in spin. Some of it's just literally because of how far away you are. Okay? That too is a lie, but that's a better approximation. Okay? So anyway, let's recap this the mellow way. This is how far out you are. This is where you're likely to be found. It's your orbital. Okay? But let's get pickier. Uh, by the way, we should translate this chunk. Can you give me the designations? So I have. If L is zero, what's the simplest configuration you could take around the nucleus? Yeah, but what does S really mean? You're a sphere. So the easiest thing you could do is here's a nucleus, and you're something like this around it. So we call zero the S orbital. Okay. What's the next guy up? What about L equal to one? That's a fancier configuration. What's a, do you remember this? What's another configuration you could take around the nucleus? Yeah, you can take this dumbbell shape, right? Everybody agree? You can recognize this. What do you call this orbital? P. P. Okay. What's really interesting is actually for all the tests you have to worry about, you could pretty much stop right here in terms of what they look like. I'm going to finish it just to be complete because you should know the orbitals for sure. But in terms of what they look like for real, this is pretty much where it ends. But how about the next guy? Do you remember the next guy up? D. D. And do you remember roughly what he looks like? I know there's some funky ones, but a rough approximation. Do everything now in terms of dumbbells. You did one dumbbell, so do two. Like you're right, cross for like a double dumbbell. Okay. This is not like two P's. There, there could be a P here and a P here. This is different. This is this guy's like somewhere in this region like this. Okay. Uh, and then take the next obvious guess. What's the final guy? F. F. And just take a wild guess. How many dumbbells? Three. So that's it. Three dumbbells. Okay. Easy. Okay. That's not so bad, right? Okay. So five second recap since we mentioned the momentum thing. That might have been confusing. This is how far out you are. This is what orbital you're likely to be in, which is roughly your general shape. Okay. I know chem chemistry professors would cry because they're being super sloppy, but it's okay. It could be worse, you could, right? Okay, so let's do the next one. Uh, do you remember how many electrons does each orbital hold? Two. So we still have missing information. In fact, even before we get there, I've got one other problem. If I talked about this guy, if I told you n is 1, and L is zero, I, I kind of know a lot. I know you're at the first energy level, and I know you look like an S, you're in an S orbital. 
That's it, right? What if I told you, say, n is 2 and l is 0? That tells you you're at the second energy level, but well, what's your general shape? Sphere. Still an S orbital, still a sphere, right? But we also said at this point, L can go from what? 0 up to n minus 1, so you could have a p orbital. Do you guys agree? Okay. Now I'm a little confused because there's room. I can stick a p orbital right there, but there's room. Where else can I stick a p orbital? Yeah, I can stick it in the other direction or dimension this way, right? And I still got one more option. What's the third option? Hard for me to draw, but you can draw it into the board and out of the board. Okay. It is not important that you memorize, I mean, depending on how much chem you want to do, but it's not important that you memorize this with a fixed axis because that's silly too. They don't just sit there like this on the board. They're randomly oriented in space and you just pick an axis to talk about. So we won't worry about that. Okay. But do you agree? I've got three different possibilities for a p orbital. And if I want to know where the electron is, I've got to tell you which one. So we need to name them. Okay. So give me a name. If you're a chemistry geek, you might think, let's just label them. If I pick the number negative 1, 0, and 1, and it doesn't matter which one goes to which, if I gave you these labels, I could have labeled it smiley, frowny, and confused. doesn't matter. If I told you which label it was, you know which orbital I'm talking about. Do you guys agree? So I need a third quantum number to tell me exactly which orbital. Anybody remember the name of that guy? That guy is the magnetic. Yeah. So this is the magnetic quantum number. So this guy is m sub l. Just to remind you, it's tagged to the orbital you're talking about. Okay? And then, do you remember the procedure for this? Like how many orbitals you have? It goes from negative l up to what? L. And we won't go, for quantum reasons, this works out. It's when you solve Schrodinger's equation and do all that junk. But for us, let's just see if it works. If, for example, we said l was 1, that's a p orbital. That would give us what l val ml values? Minus 1, 0, and 1. And you know how many p orbitals do you have? 3. And it lines up perfectly. Right? Whatever they are. So just think of these as names for your different orbitals. So you're almost there. You know exactly how far out you are. You know what orb rough wannabe orbit you're in. You know exactly which orbital we're talking about. Because now I'm specifying them, right? Everybody agree? So the final thing is what? How many electrons can an orbital hold? Or almost final? Two. So you need to be able to tell the two electrons apart. Okay, that's our final number. Okay. But and let's go ahead and do that. But before we do that, let me finish this up. So let's talk really quickly about P, D, and F. Five seconds of this. Uh, first, try your, the numbers game. What were the ML values for DB? So remember we said the L value for D is what? Not one, but two. And for F, it's? Three, so the DML value should be what? Two. And what would it be for F? Three. Negative one, zero, one, two, and three. But remember, how do we think of these roughly? They're just names. Yeah, they're names representing the different orbitals. So you should know this off the top of your head, but you could figure it out too. How many D orbitals do you have? Five. One, two, three, four, five. Those are their names. How many F orbitals? Seven, but you see their names. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven names for seven, seven different orbitals. Okay. Anyway, so now the final thing. We said even if you knew how far out you are, what orbital, what orbital type you have, the exact orbital, you still don't know which electron. So to nail the electron, you need what? You need one more guy, spin. You could call it smiley and frowny. They just happen to use the equations and call it plus and minus a half. So that's not too bad either, right? Then it's obvious. Plus, m plus a half names one guy, minus a half names the other. Okay, so no biggie. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a silly table in a moment. But is everybody okay with this? Are we comfortable with these ideas? So just a quick recap. This is how far out you are. This is the type of orbital. So you can think of this guy as the type of orbital. Okay. This is what? This isn't just the type of orbital you're in. You're in it's what? It's the exact orbital. So this is the exact orbital. Okay. Again, chem profs would cry. And this gives you what? This gets you down to the exact electron. Okay. Cheesy question they can actually ask. If I gave you the first three quantum numbers, how many electrons would that specify? Two. Two.
because you know how far out, what type of orbital, orbital, the exact orbital, you would just be missing one, the spin, whether he's an up guy or a down guy. Okay, can we let this guy go? Okay. This is it though. It just comes down to this, and then we can let it all go. Okay. Last thing before we leave this, let's do a cheesy table. So I'm going to do N, L. I want the type of orbital. I want the exact orbital name. And then we don't need to do spin because that's silly. It's always plus or minus a half. So let's do the number of electrons. Okay. And let's get some connections out of it. Okay. Not hard core science, but we're going to get some good connections. So what's the first energy level you can have? Obviously n equal to 1. What's the only L value allowed? Zero. zero perfect. But zero just tells you what? What's the type of orbital you can have? S. And since there's only one way you can orient a sphere, he just needs a name, right? What's the most convenient name for him? Zero. Remember, M all runs from negative L to, to positive L, but all that means is you're just naming him. There's only one guy, might as well just call him zero. Okay? Remember, it fits the pattern though. That's plus or minus L. Okay. Okay, how many electrons can you hold? Two. What does that kind of explain? Or at least you make a connection with it. What does two kind of explain? There are some guys out there, they're just, when you fill everything up, they're happy. Who's happy with just two? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. So. Everybody agree? Like water, for example. Isn't hydrogen, doesn't, he doesn't really do an octet. He fills up at what? Two. So you want to make this connection. He's really just here. So if you fill him up with two electrons, he's totally full. He's happy. Okay? So let's make that connection. This guy explains, in a way, hydrogen. Okay, let's push this up. How about n equal to 2? What are my L values? Oh, no, don't, you're too smart. Just go super mellow. Th what types of orbitals can you have? Just 0 up to 1 less, right? And the 0 tells you what type of orbital? S. And the 1 tells you what type? P. And then we've done this game before. How many S's are there? There's just 1. We might as well call him 0. How many P's are there? Three, but you want to name them. So how do we name them? We name them what? Negative one, zero, and one. These are just names. Okay. How many electrons do you get from the zero guy? Two. How many from these guys? Six. Two from each of them. How many total? Eight. What does that kind of explain? This is the octet rule. Uh, let's try one more. Let's at least go to three. So now this is old hat. Zero goes to an s orbital. Might as well just call them zero. That's two electrons. The L value, the angular momentum quantum number of one here, gives us a p orbital. He's got three names, or three different p orbitals. Negative one, zero, and one. That's six electrons, right? And then down here, we have all the way down two. That's a d orbital, or d orbitals. And their names are minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. Sorry, it's getting kind of cramped here. I'll write a little bit better. Mm. And here we definitely have two for each of these, so 10 electrons. And if you sum these all together, this is 18. Uh, can we get anything out of this? Well, we can get a little bit, because what we notice here is we're, we've gone beyond the octet, right? But what really allows us to go beyond the octet are these d orbitals. Okay? So this is kind of related to that notion of expanded octet, and we see that we can achieve an expanded octet because we have access to d orbitals, right? So in a way, this kind of explains why hydrogen is happy, right? Uh, why the octet rule kind of works, and over here, uh, the expanded octet. It does make sense, okay? All right, so not too bad, let's let this go. So if you can reproduce this table, or you understand the basics, and you know what those things mean, right? Just roughly, intuitively, what N, L, M sub L, and the spin stand for, then you are in good shape, okay? Uh, for example, if I give you the first three quantum numbers, you would have what? The N, the L, and the M sub L. That would specify what orbital you're talking about, but it wouldn't nail down the electron, right? Because in any given orbital, you have two electrons. Also, if you had all four quantum numbers specified, that would nail down exactly which electron we're talking about. Okay? So all we need are those four quantum numbers. Okay, no big deal. The nice part is if you remember stuff like um, Schrodinger's equation, um, you know, the radial probability density function, all that sort of stuff, you know, guys that look like this, et cetera, et cetera, you can forget all that crud. Okay? So for our exam, we are more than good with quantum numbers.